Okay, so here I'm answering a question that we received from uh, users. Do polyglots ever get to a place where they're learning three or more languages at a time? And I would like to say that uh, I believe that polyglots are usually working on a new language uh, and they do one language at a time, but at the same time they want to keep uh, maintenance on their other languages. And so in that case, they may be rotating through quite a number of languages at the B1 or B2 level and just keeping them up, uh, doing some daily practice with those. And that's why Glossika is a great platform where you can actually keep maintenance on a lot of different languages, whatever you have done in the past, and put most of your intensity on the one language that you're adding uh, to the mix uh, that you're working on. So a certain polyglots like, um, like Richard Simcott, on a daily basis, he uses a lot of languages uh, with his work and uh, the kind of jobs that he works on. And so he's uh, frequently using those languages to communicate with people. Uh, in my case, I'm actually uh, working mostly on uh, documents and, and text. And so I work with a lot of like transcription programs. I work with um, vocabulary lists and stuff like this in a lot of different languages. So on a typical day for somebody uh, like Richard in his job, he might be using you know, 12 to 15 different languages. Uh, in a typical day of mine, I sometimes see 10 to 12 different languages, and you never know what's going to come up in the next hour. Um, we, we might be working on a project where we have to switch. Um, you know, at one moment I'm looking at Greek, and the next moment I'm looking at Polish, uh, you know, and then Arabic. Um, I remember uh, just yesterday, uh, I went over and we worked on Arabic for like an hour, we are working on uh, regular expressions, and so, you know, this kind of thing comes up all the time, and so you never know what you're going to be uh, faced with the next hour. So I'm switching between Arabic and then Thai and then Greek and then some Slavic language and then might be Icelandic, and so it's just a really big mix. Um, and with this kind of job, you don't necessarily have to know all the details about that language. We just know how to do uh, specific skills with that job. But of course, understanding uh, how that language works, uh, what are some of the um, specifics about uh, the structure of the language, really helps us to do our job better.